Chapter four, learning hard lessons. Whose land is it? Traveling hundreds of miles through the wilderness was a long way to go to deliver a message. It must have seemed especially long to the 21-year-old military officer from Virginia who delivered the message. All he got for his troubles was a big no. The young officer and his party of six were from the British colony of Virginia. They were members of the Virginia militia, a sort of volunteer citizen's army. The year was in 1753. France had just built a string of forts along the Ohio River in what is now Western Pennsylvania. The young officer's mission was to carry a message from the governor of Virginia to the French general in charge of those forts. On page 27, it says the French and British built forts in North America. For weeks, the Virginians traveled by horseback and canoe until they finally met up with the French general. The young officer handed him the message. The main idea of the message was simple. Your forts are on Virginia's land. Get out. The French general was polite but firm. No, he replied, my troops will not get out. This land belongs to the France. French fur trappers have lived on this land for over a hundred years. French colonists have settled here. We will not leave. On the return journey to Virginia, the group's horses gave out, forcing the officer and his men to walk. Along the way, a Native American fired at the officer. The shot barely missed him. Then, while crossing an ice-filled river on a raft, the officer was accidentally knocked overboard. He nearly drowned before his men got out. The men finally returned to Virginia, and the officer gave the governor bad news. The French were determined to stay. The young officer's unusual, sorry, the young officer's unsuccessful journey would soon lead to war. The war led to the events that brought about the birth of the United States of America. Who was the 21-year-old officer from the Virginia colony? His name was George Washington. He would have a lot to do with the birth of the United States of America. Subheading says, Washington's mistakes. The governor of the Virginia colony was determined to make the French leave the land near the Ohio River. If they could achieve this, Virginia would have more control of the Ohio River and the smaller rivers that flowed from and fed into the larger river. One year later, in 1754, he sent George Washington to the West again. This time, Washington led a force of 150 men. The British had built a small fort in western Pennsylvania on the site of present-day Pittsburgh. The picture here next to George Washington says, George Washington was proud to be an officer in the Virginia militia. The fort sat where two rivers come together to form the Ohio River. Washington was to join forces with the British soldiers at, soldiers at the fort. Before he arrived, Washington learned that the French had already captured the British fort and renamed it Fort Duquesne. Sorry, Fort Duquesne. In time, George Washington became a great general, but in 1754, he was young and inexperienced. He made a number of mistakes. Washington did not have enough men to drive the French out of the fort. The wisest thing to do would have been to return to Virginia. Instead, he continued on with a small force. Along the way, Washington's troops surprised and defeated a group of 30 French soldiers, killing 10 of them. The fort, the French at Fort Duquesne had much more men, had many more men than Washington had, and they had had Shawnee and Delaware Native American allies as well. They were sure to send out a larger force from the fort to deal with Washington's Virginians. Realizing this, Washington built a makeshift camp southeast of the French stronghold. His men called the camp Fort Necessity. The spot Washington chose for Fort Necessity was a low piece of ground. Soon after the French attacked, it began to rain heavily. Before long, Washington's men, their guns, and their gunpowder were soaked with the rain that collected in the low area where the fort was built. The Virginians fought bravely, but after nine hours, Washington was forced to surrender. The French commander instructed an assistant to prepare a statement explaining why the fighting had taken place. The statement said, we the Virginians are the ones who started the fighting. It was all our fault. 
The French commander read the statement and handed it to Washington. Sign, he said. Sign or I will not allow the prisoners to return to Virginia. Washington signed and the men were released. When the men returned to Virginia, British officials were very angry. They were angry with the French and angry with Washington. They blamed him for his unwise decisions. They also blamed him for signing the statement. Washington resigned from the Virginia militia. That could have been the end of his military career. If it had been, he might be saluting the British flag today instead of stars and stripes.